Hi folks, welcome back to my channel where I focus on backpacking, fly fishing, and making music. Well, in today's video, we're going to do a Grote jazz guitar makeover and find out if we can improve the playability and the sound of this guitar. I've assembled a few parts that I think will make this guitar sound much better. We'll start with the pickups. I have a Vanson uh, P90 pickup. They're out of the UK. It's a budget model, $34 US, I believe is about what I paid for it. The next pickup I'm going to try is a P90 designed by Epiphone. So we'll see how this stacks up in the pickup realm. And we'll do tone comparisons for both of those pickups and compare that to the original pickup. We'll do that at the end of the video. Next thing I think will impact tone is putting in a tone and volume pot. We'll also attach a 0.022 microfarad orange drop capacitor, which matches well with the P90, on the uh, tone pot. And we'll see how that affects sound. I think the next thing that will affect sound is putting in a bone saddle. Uh, this is actually a new bone material. Um, and it has a, a walnut uh, base to it, uh, very typical of a jazz archtop guitar. So we'll see if this affects tone versus the existing uh, tunematic metal knife edge uh, saddle that's on it right now. And then finally, we're going to replace the tuners on the guitar. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to go with all gold hardware as I go through this whole thing. I think gold looks better on this guitar, and uh, we'll see. Uh, how all of these pieces will affect tone. Now, a quick disclaimer. I'm not sponsored in any way by the products mentioned in this video. I purchased everything with my own money. And it's up to you if you click like, subscribe, click the bells or whatnot. It's not what drives this channel. I just like making videos that help you in your DIY pursuits. But I do ask you a favor. If you click the dislike button, click it again just to be sure. So let's get over to the workbench and get on with this Grote Jazz Guitar Makeover. This guitar comes in at just a little over six pounds at uh, six pounds one ounces. It's a 100% hollow body guitar. So what that means uh, it has a center of arch support block just below the bridge. That block is right in here and it supports this arch and it's a slight arch. Let's see if we can't see that. You can see where it's just a slight arch. Uh, but if you drive this guitar with overdrive, distortion, or fuzz, you'll get immense feedback. This guitar is really meant to be a jazz box to deliver clean tones. It's got a Canadian maple neck and body according to Grote's Amazon listing. I find this odd since they're made in Korea. Uh, why would they ship Canadian wood to Korea to make these guitars? I think that just adds expense. The neck is made of two pieces and since this is stained pretty heavily or even painted um, the scarf joint is right here and so this headstock is one piece and then the neck from about right here all the way down into here and it's a set-in neck which goes into the body uh, that's all two pieces right there. The logo and the Gibson style headstock adornment is laser cut thin holographic film applied over the top of the paint. Uh, they're not inlays, but nonetheless they look very nice. The embossed truss rod cover is definitely a nice upgrade from the plastic one you might find in other budget guitars. And it slides out so that you can access uh, truss rod adjustments directly without having to take this plate out. The body is uh, made of a wood laminate but I cannot tell right now how many layers are in the laminate. I might be able to tell when I take the pickup out uh, how many laminate uh, pieces are on this. I'd say it's probably five right now, which is very typical for standard hollow bodies. Any fewer plies in the arch top uh, would probably have a hard time supporting string tension, I would think. The stock tuners are sealed, you know, similar to like Grover, Schaller, or Gotha. They don't hold tune for very long and they have some play in them and they definitely need to be replaced. The nut is a synthetic material. It's milled 
uh, okay. There's nothing wrong with the nut. There's probably nothing I would do to it uh, to change it. Uh, the fretboard is a rosewood substitute, uh, probably Palfero, Indian Laurel, or Ovencol. The fretboard wood is definitely dry, so that's going to need some conditioning. Maybe apply uh, some lemon oil overnight and let it soak in and then rub it off in the morning. The rounded corner uh, block inlays are very nicely done. It's made of perloid acrylic uh, and they're, they've been set into the uh, fretboard wood very nicely with no gaps at all. The fret edges are nicely done. There might be a few sharp edges here and there that I can round off, but for the most part you probably wouldn't have to do anything out of the box to these frets other than give them a good polish. It's not entirely standard uh, to have a tunomatic style bridge on a jazz box, although the guild models do use these. So instead of using this knife edge tunomatic bridge, I'm going to put on an all natural walnut bridge to be more authentic and to hopefully get a more uh, mellow jazz tone out of this guitar. The trapeze is pretty standard and is connected at the tail of the guitar with two screws and then the screw that goes through uh, for uh, the strap lock. And the pick guard is pretty standard uh, for this style of guitar. Well, I oiled the uh, fretboard overnight and uh, it absorbed it all. I put it on a second coat and it absorbed some of it and I wiped the rest off. So the fretboard is now nicely hydrated and, and oiled. Um, I just did uh, a fret shine and just kind of put smoothness uh, on the top of these crowns. And I noticed just in a few spaces, uh, particularly from right here, let's see if I can focus, right here through these five frets right here, uh, the edges are a little sharp and I'll take them down, but if I didn't do anything to them, they're pretty, pretty good as is. Okay, just got back from the bench where I've made the mods that I'd like to make to this guitar. Overall, I think this guitar has impressive build quality. I was able to do an essential mod makeover for this guitar for less than 100 bucks. So let's see if I've improved the playability and tone with these mods. I put in new tuners. I swapped out the P90 with a Vanson P90 and an Epiphone P90 versus the stock P90. I installed a 250K tone pot, which is an audio taper, with a 0.022 microfarad orange drop. I installed a 250K volume pot, which has a linear taper to it. And I installed a new bone rosewood saddle. I changed the knobs from silver to gold. I put on a gold trapeze versus the silver one that came with the guitar. And I swapped out the stock black pickguard for a tortoiseshell pickguard. Okay, I'm not the world's greatest guitarist, but let's see if my mods were worth it. Here's a few notes on the sound recordings you're about to hear. I used the same strings for each of the tone tests. The tone and volume knobs were set at full open. I didn't mess with any other settings, so you're going to hear some breakup, but it's not clipping. It's due to a combination of the amp simulation profiles I used and the pickups themselves. Typically, I'd EQ out those low frequency breakups, but for this experiment, you get to hear the real deal. I did not adjust the height of the pickup for the tone tests, although I will experiment with this outside of this video. By the way, P90s that are far from the strings will typically sound muddy. Closer to the strings will yield more volume, more brightness, and a clearer tone profile. Sound tests are recorded straight into Helix Native using a Roland JC120 and a Fender Twin Reverb Bi-Amp simulation. These are two of the most popular jazz club amps of all time. I applied a neutral tone setting and a noise gate in the back end because, you know, P90s have that notorious 60 cycle hum. No other adjustments were done in the DAW. I'm not a jazz guitarist, so I can't give this guitar a proper jazz workout, but I've come up with three sound tests using different playing style approaches that can help you determine if the upgrades were worth it. Here's what you'll hear to evaluate the changes before and after. I'll comp a simple jazz style progression against the drum backing track, so you can hear how comping, string damping, and the overall sound blends in with the other instruments. I'll do a simple strumming pattern with a heavy one millimeter pick 
to hear tonal balance, sustain, and responsiveness to a pick. And finally, I'll finger pick a short Travis picking rockabilly style progression to hear how finger picking is articulated by the P90 pickups. So, what's my choice? I was surprised by what I liked. For comping, I liked warm jazz tones of the Epiphone P90, and I bet moving them closer to the strings would give me some clarity. For strumming, I liked the tonal balance and the mid-range voice of the Vanson P90. It would be a great choice for all-around playing. For finger picking, I liked the crisp articulation of the Grote stock P90. I heard some Telecaster chime in it. Overall, I like the Vanson P90 as a good compromise between the crispy stock P90 and the very warm Epiphone P90. 
I can adjust the tone pot and add some EQ in post-production to obtain anything from a telly style sound to a warm jazz tone. So here are my conclusions. The guitar straight out of the box has a clean, bright sound. Maybe too bright for a traditional jazz box, but the stock P90 is not horrible by any stretch. I'll probably need to raise the Vanson and the Epiphone P90 closer to the strings to obtain more clarity and less muddiness. The stock volume pot worked as expected with maybe a little bit of tone roll off from five to zero. The stock tone pot, <laughs> it was horrible. There was almost no tone impact down to four. Then the tone went from clean to dark between three and two. Replacing the stock tone and volume pot with quality components and a .022 microfarad capacitor on the tone pot gives the guitar a bit more consistent tone and volume control in my opinion. The new bone and rosewood saddle added some sustain, but it was really hard to discern if it really added a significant impact on tone. If you wanted to do a budget makeover on this guitar, here's what I'd recommend. I'd replace the tuning machines, I'd adjust the action, but I wouldn't focus on the truss rod first. I'd focus on the saddle area, adjusting that to fit your needs. And I'd oil the fretboard. This fretboard was quite dry out of the box and needed some fretboard oil. So did I improve the tone of this jazz guitar? Let me know your thoughts and preferences in the comments below. I'd love to see them. And thanks for watching. I thought I would share a side-by-side -side visual tone spectrum comparison for each of the P90 pickups used in this video. The frequency distribution graphs were created using M Autodynamics from Melda Productions. I'll provide a link in the video description below. The graphs aggregate and summarize all three playing styles for each P90 pickup. I've added in horizontal and vertical axes to help visually illustrate the key tonal differences between the pickups. The vertical axis is essentially a volume axis and is arbitrarily centered at the graph at 500 Hz. The horizontal axis is the frequency range and is centered on 0 dB. So anything above the line represents a volume boost and anything below the line is a volume drop for any given frequency. The Grote stock P90 has a full bottom end and was the brightest with the most upper register definition. It was crisp and clear with almost no discernible breakup almost like a single coil Telecaster bridge pickup. The Vanson P90 had good total balance throughout with a tad more chime, but less clarity, if that makes sense. It has very little muddiness and modest breakup when you dig into the strings. The Epiphone P90 was very similar to the Vanson P90 in some respects, but was darker due to the lack of clarity in the upper registers. It had some low end breakup if I dug into the strings as well. I think bringing this pickup closer to the strings will most likely do this pickup better justice. The stock P90 measured at 8.63 ohms of resistance. The Vanson P90 measured at 8.18 ohms of resistance. And the Epiphone P90 measured at 11.65 ohms of resistance. I show this to prove that you cannot use an ohm reading alone just to gauge the sound of a pickup. If that were the case, the Epiphone P90 would have been the hottest and the Vanson the quietest and there would be no way to tell that the stock P90 had so much high-end clarity. All three P90s had a very similar bottom-end profile. It was the intensity of 500 Hz to 2000 Hz, or lack thereof, that separated the P90s apart. One was crisp, one was warm and muddy, and one sat in the middle of the two. Well, I hope this has all been helpful and useful to you, and thanks again for watching.